Hi, I'm Lieutenant Brandon Smith with the Iowa City Fire Department and I'm here today at fire station number two and I'm going to show you how to grill like a firefighter. Grill like a firefighter. I'm going to grill a couple of my favorite recipes, barbecued chicken split breasts and sliced red potatoes with mushrooms and some asparagus. Uh, we're also going to talk about some grilling tips, some tips that you can use around the house uh, when you're grilling in the, in the summertime, or any time for that matter, uh, to help keep you safe uh, when you're grilling. And also some tips, some safety tips to use around the house when you're at home uh, cooking so that you uh, don't hurt yourself. So come on with me and let's grill like a firefighter. All right, so I'm making some uh, B red sized potatoes today with uh, portobello mushrooms and this will all go on the grill here in a little bit. Um, we're also making split breast chicken barbecue style. So, and I do a little bit differently and you'll kind of see how I'm gonna do that in a little bit, but gotta get everything prepped first and my bee potatoes go on first because they take a little bit longer than the chicken and I prefer to have my bee potatoes, my red potatoes, uh, a little bit browned if not burnt just adds the flavor. So we get the onion in there and the sugars from the onion start cooking up and uh, get a nice nice flavor of uh, onion and garlic and salt, pepper and some other seasoning. So and I use a Vidalia onion because I like it to be a little bit sweeter for this, uh, for the potatoes. Um, I think that the uh, sugars from the Vidalia onion seem to uh, burn a little bit better too when it grills up. So. So this will all go in the bowl and then get mixed up with all the seasoning, a little bit of butter, all the good stuff. A little bit of salt, a little bit of seasoning salt. And I mix everything up real well. And a little more garlic. You can never go wrong with garlic. I nearly forgot the mushrooms. Got to have the mushrooms in there too. That all mixed up. And then this is pretty much good enough to feed an army. Uh, there's only a crew of three of us out here today at Station 2. And normally at Station 2, that's all we have. So uh, an engine company is made up of uh, three personnel. And on the truck company, it's four. So we've got plenty of here for uh, lunch and dinner. Make a nice little pouch. Steam the potatoes for, oh, about 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna actually cut it open and let the potatoes kind of brown up a little bit. As far as our lunch is concerned, well, you know, a lot of times, uh, most times we do a lunch on our own, unless it's on the weekend. Um, then we kind of do what they call the communi communal meal, so everybody pitches in and we all kind of cook something together. So uh, that's what we're doing today. Grill like a firefighter. All right, so some tips on, on grilling safety. First and foremost, obviously, uh, you have two types of grills for the most part. You have a charcoal grill and you also have a gas grill. Um, here we've got a gas grill and it can either be LP or natural gas. Uh, if it's natural gas, it's going to be piped directly to your house. Natural gas, have an LP tank. Um, this one happens to be natural gas. Here at the fire station, it's piped in. Actually, when we get a call, it automatically shuts off so that we don't burn our food, we don't start the station on fire, so on and so forth. So a um, couple safety tips. First of all, when lighting, you want to make sure you open the lid. Um, and the reason we do that is so that gas doesn't build up in this area. And when it does finally light, if you have a problem with the igniter, that it, it doesn't 
whoosh, take off and, and blow up in your face. So um, make sure that you have the lid open to, to, to light your uh, gas grill. So um, number two, you know, a lot of us at Grill, we like to have uh, that excess uh, char and stuff like that on a grill because that kind of adds flavor or seasoning to our food. Um, but it's not a good idea to allow that to be excessively built up, so a lot of fat and so on and so forth on the back possibly or underneath. You want to make sure that you, you clear out that dripping pan uh, every single time, um, that you don't have a, a drip pan full of, of animal fat laying down there because that can start a fire and burn pretty readily. So, um, Some other tips when you're grilling, know where your fire extinguisher is. If you have a fire extinguisher, know how to use it first and foremost. Um, if you don't know how to use it, a fire extinguisher is worthless. Um, but if, if you're grilling, make sure you know you have a fire extinguisher, you know where it's at, and you, and you know how to use it. And it's also not a bad idea just to have uh, a garden hose somewhere near that you could use in case something were to start a fire, it spread, or so on and so forth. Um, Notice that our grill here in this space, everything around it is concrete or metal. Even, even the eaves overhead um, is metal, so we don't have anything that's combustible around this. If you have your grill setting on your deck and you have a wooden deck, that's something to be concerned about. They do make uh, reflector pans that you can put underneath your grill, uh, but you also have to think about behind your grill uh, if you set your grill up next to the railing and you have a wooden railing, that can get hot enough, say you're smoking meats or something like that, so you have extended process where that heat is allowed to uh, break down the wood and actually pyrolyze it and then start a fire. So think about that. Um, so s some of the other safety tips that, that we're concerned about when grilling. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and light the grill right now. So I have my lid open and I'm going to turn the gas on and then hit the igniter and then I heard it basically the flame uh, start right up. Some grills it's not readily obvious that the grill is actually lit so you might need to look underneath and double check just to make sure it's lit. Uh, ours actually has a little peephole down here on the side that I can look in and I can see to make sure that the, the burner is actually lit. Some grills you can see the burners just fine and uh, you know that that's going. So I know that my grill's lit, now I'm going to close the lid and I'm just going to let it get hot because the potatoes that I put on here in a little bit I want a nice hot grill so I sear, uh, sear those uh, potatoes. Alright, so let's go ahead and get these potatoes on the grill. Nice and hot. Set those right in the center and let them go. As far as charcoal grills are concerned, um, kind of the same principle as the gas, except that you're using charcoal. So you're basically using some sort of combustible material, whether it be charcoal briquettes or even some sort of logs or a campfire. Um, you can't turn the flame off like you can with a gas grill. So you, you really want to be prepared in case something were to happen and that, that fire uh, gets out of control. But again, uh, your grill, you do not want to put it on, on a combustible surface, i.e. your deck, uh, wood deck, because it can start on fire. Um, using it away from a building, um, if at all possible, just to protect uh, anything from spreading. Um, when, you, when you're using charcoal briquettes, uh, I always tell people, use the ones with the match light. They've got the charcoal fluid already in them, uh, so there's, there, you don't have to worry about that big whoosh uh, after putting on uh, the charcoal fluid. But if you don't, you don't use those, you use some sort of natural wood briquette or a briquette that's not pre-soaked with, with charcoal lighter fluid. Uh, Put your charcoal lighter fluid on top of your briquettes and then allow that to evaporate a little bit so that those gases are off gassing and it's going to be in an open area um, and you don't have that big flame start up. Uh, you never want to, once you have those the charcoal going, you never want to add more lighter fluid to that. Uh, that's just basically throwing fuel on the fire and then you're going to get a large flame up. Uh, if it, 
If you need to add more charcoal to it, that's fine. Uh, if you're doing some sort of, like, like I said before, smoking or something like that, uh, you can add more charcoal brick briquettes to it, but don't add lighter fluid to it. Just allow the, the heat that you have from the existing uh, charcoal heat that the other charcoal briquettes up. Real like a firefighter. All right, so now it's uh, time to prep my chicken and want to have the uh, split chicken breasts, my favorite for this one. And what I do is I ended up, I'll end up just pulling the skin away from the chicken, running my finger underneath each one of them. And there's just a small, thin membrane you can see right there that stays on the chicken that allows the barbecue sauce to stay in between uh, the meat and the skin. That way it doesn't dry out. One thing about cooking chicken is you definitely want to make sure uh, that you prep correctly and wash your hands anytime you're changing, doing something different, going from the chicken to touching something. Um, and then even on my, my tray that I'll, I'll take out to the grill, I'll have a piece of aluminum foil on that. So I'm protecting that surface when I uh, don't have to deal with. I can use that pan again, basically, is what I'm saying. So. So then I'll just fill this whole area up with barbecue sauce underneath the skin. Make a nice mess here. And this is not a homemade recipe or anything like that as far as the barbecue sauce is concerned. I wish it, I could say it were, but um, it's not. I have found that I've tried to make barbecue sauce before and I'm just wasting my time. I can buy a barbecue sauce that I prefer, that I, I like and uh, just use it. So the other thing that's nice about this too is it keeps the barbecue sauce from burning because the, the barbecue sauce has a lot of sugar in it. And a lot of times when you put that on the grill, you end up with a, a black mess if you're trying to cook chicken or whatever you're grilling or barbecuing. Um, so this helps it uh, keep from charring. And once I put this on the grill, I'm going to cook it for, I'm going to grill it for just about 45 minutes. It, it takes a while. And I keep it on the bone side down on the grill for the, for the best part of that 45 minutes. And the only time I turn it over is about maybe the last 10 minutes or so. So it's going to stay bone side down. And I don't care if the, the bottom burns, the bone burns, um, because that, I'm not going to be eating that anyway, so. All right, so chicken looks prepped. Uh, we got a little bit of barbecue sauce on the, gr on the skin. So if anybody wants to eat the skin, they can eat the skin. It gives a little extra flavor. So I'm not going to eat the skin. I'm not too concerned about it. So we get the chicken over here. Once I get the chicken over here, I'm going to throw a little bit of uh, seasoned salt actually on the skin as itself as well. Uh, but first of all, I'm going to wash my hands, so. All right, so let's get these uh, chicken breasts on the grill. So now I uh, already put the chicken on and I need to get the potatoes moved over. So we'll slide the potatoes over carefully. Prevent fires. Got to have the fire department uh, oven mitt on. Looking good. Something else to consider uh, whenever you're grilling or even cooking, uh, especially on the grill, use a set of tongs to grill with. Obviously in this situation, since I've already touched my raw chicken, I'm not going to use this one um, to touch them again later through the cooking process. I'll take them inside and wash them. Um, but use a set of longer tongs. This is a pretty good length so I can get over the grill without burning myself. 
Uh, but in this situation, if I have to do anything with the potatoes, I definitely want to have uh, a pot handle or some sort of oven mitt on my hand so I'm not going to burn myself because that aluminum foil is about 350 degrees right now and that's going to cause some pretty bad burns. So, so now we uh, close the lid on that and set it and really when I say set it I mean set yourself a reminder. Uh, I know that I need to cook this chicken on the grill for about 45 minutes and just like anytime you're in the cooking in, in the kitchen cooking same thing with grilling uh, this is the situation where I can kind of walk away from it. Uh, so that, that's the type of grilling I'm doing so it takes about 45 minutes I'm gonna walk away but I'm gonna set myself a reminder on my watch that uh, I need to come and check on it in about 25 minutes or so just make sure everything's doing okay and um, same thing if you're in the kitchen whenever you're cooking uh, especially if you're baking something in the oven or if you're doing something on the stove top that's covered uh, boiling or whatever set yourself a reminder uh, either on your phone or with an alarm some sort of device that's going to let you know that hey uh, a lot of people walk away and forget that they're cooking something they get busy we get busy with life and we get on the computer we're watching a television program busy with the kids whatever whatever it may be so set yourself a reminder um, to come back and check in a little bit another subject that I kinda wanna talk about is you know we talked about where the grill is located you never ever want to grill inside never want to grill inside your house never want to grill inside of a garage uh, some people will in the middle of winter they like to grill uh, it's not a good idea to grill inside. Uh, if you grill inside at your garage, uh, you need to have a, uh, the door all the way open because grills do create carbon monoxide. Uh, and that's another hazard that we have to think about. So make sure that you're grilling outside. Um, if your only option is in, like in the winter to grill inside, make sure that you have the garage door open. Uh, but then it is very hazardous when you do that just because you're inside of, of your house. All right, so now I gotta prep my asparagus. Spread it out, put some olive oil on it. Get that mixed in. Garlic salt, again. Garlic salt's good. Get some of that on there. Some black pepper. And just kind of roll that around, distribute it evenly, and this is ready for the grill. Grill like a firefighter. Checking looks coming right along with the chicken. Checking to see here. I want it to kind of split on the bottom side. Chicken's looking good. I want a nice split along here on the side of the chicken, so that's all right. Free it up there. Just kind of move it around a little bit. Potatoes are coming along. See in there, the steaming up pretty good. You got a ways to go yet, but we're doing all right. So we're just about ready to put the asparagus on, but we'll allow these uh, potatoes to cook a little bit longer before I throw that asparagus on, because that doesn't take too long. Oh yeah, chicken's looking fantastic. Definitely. It's time to get that asparagus on. Get 
Get that spread out a little bit. Give that asparagus some time to grill. Maybe blacken up a little bit, nothing wrong with that. Potatoes are looking good. We're about ready to eat. All right, let's check it. Oh yeah, it looks good. So let's get the chicken off. Let's eat. You're watching City Channel 4, your window to our community.